I'm Jenna Robinson. This is part two in a series about declining academic standards. Today, I'm gonna to talk about what happens once students get to college. Author Murray Sperber coined the phrase faculty-student non-aggression pact in his 2001 book, Beer and Circus, to give a name to the typical course expectations at most American universities. In speeches, I've heard Rich Vetter succinctly explain the pact as, I pretend to teach, they pretend to learn. That brings me to my first point. General education requirements have been gutted at most American universities. The trend in general education is now to teach capacities or skills instead of knowledge. The idea is that it doesn't matter what students are reading as long as they're improving their reading comprehension and vocabulary. And it doesn't matter what they're writing as long as they're improving their written communication skills. But we know that it actually does matter. It turns out that knowledge is domain specific. I'll use an example from education scholar E.D. Hirsch. He writes about an experiment done on students' reading comprehension skills. A passage was given to students and the topic was baseball. Some of the students had high reading comprehension skills. Some students had low reading comprehension skills. But what turned out to matter was students' knowledge of baseball. This shows that the knowledge that you already have, the background information that you bring into your studies, helps your reading comprehension, helps your understanding. And so general education requirements really matter for student learning. Only 18% of colleges and universities today require what you may call a foundational course in American politics or government or American history. Less than one third of schools require students to study literature and only 8% of the nation's top universities require Eng English majors to take a course focused on Shakespeare. And that was when it was studied in 2015. It's probably far worse now. On top of that, more and more campuses are shuttering their classics departments. Princeton's classics department recently announced that Greek and Latin would no longer be required for classics majors. That's an example of how academic rigor at universities is being destroyed along with the general education requirements. One example is the amount of studying that students do. 36% of students at four-year colleges reported studying alone for five or fewer hours per week. And in spite of that, in spite of that modest effort, these individuals managed to earn a 3.2 grade point average. Reading and writing requirements have also been gutted. 45% of students reported that in the prior semester, they did not have a single course that required more than 20 pages of writing over the entire semester. 32% did not even have one class that assigned 40 pages of reading per week. And in the last few decades, full-time college students' hours of studying have dropped in half from 25 hours per week to approximately 12 hours per week. In their 2011 book, Academically Adrift, Aram and Roxa report, an astounding proportion of students are progressing through higher education today without measurable gains in general skills. And in their study of 2,322 students at nationally representative four-year institutions, they found that by the end of their sophomore year, at least 45% of students showed no significant improvement in critical thinking, complex reasoning, and writing skills. You'll remember that when I talked about general education requirements, these are the very things that colleges say they are focusing on. Capacities, skills, abilities, and yet students are showing no improvement by the end of their sophomore year. Because of this lack of learning, universities have been inflating grades at a rate of 0.14 GPA points per decade for the last 50 years. After years of professors making these kinds of incremental changes, say the researchers, the amount of rise becomes so large that what's happening becomes clear. Mediocre students are getting higher and higher grades. Next time, I'll talk about what happens once students graduate from universities and enter the real world.